is a special presentation of Riverfront Broadcasting Sports. It's time for Post 8 Baseball on today's KCCR and today's KCCR.com. Post 8 Baseball is brought to you by Evermore Boutique, Wagner Auto, Hawaii Federal Credit Union, Service Master, and Rising Hope Counseling. Indeed, outdoors right field. That one is going to get out for Benedine. Five runs driven in. Post 8 Baseball is also brought to you by Todd's Electric. Pier Sports Center, AirTech, Gales Gas, Avera, Bank West, and B&B Equipment. Zabel on the 3-0, out towards center field. That's far, that's gone, a three-run homer for Gray Zabel. It is a 3-1 lead. post State Baseball is also brought to you by Overhead Door Company, Gateway Ford, Lincoln, and Toyota, Birding Electric, Olsen Plumbing, and Agtegra. Here's a fly ball out to left field. Going back on it deep is Rue. He's going to turn and watch it sail over for a home run. And Andy Gordon, his first home run of the season, first home run of his career. post eight baseball is also brought to you by All Around Graphics. First Dakota National Bank. Comtech. Shane's Pharmacy. Black Hills Federal Credit Union. Midwest Cooperative, South Dakota Weed and Pest, Nystrom Electric, Dakota Sprinkler, and Lamb Motor. The 2-1 pitch, Stout, out towards right field. Did he get enough of it? Is it going to go? And walk off, Grand Slam for Garrett Stout. Post-8 Baseball is also brought to you by Kathy Sunshine Properties, Sioux Nation, Kruger Contracting, Home Care Services, and Fisher Rounds. And now, with the call of today's action, KCCR award-winning sports director, John Winkler. And a good Tuesday afternoon as we welcome you to Hyatt Stadium for some afternoon baseball. John Winkler alongside Greg Dean as the Eights will host Aberdeen and Sturgis in a triangular here today as the first game will be against Aberdeen. They'll play that final game of the night around 7 o'clock against Sturgis. But uh, Post-8 finishing off of 14 straight games at home to open up the season. And these are two big wins here for Post-8 to, to try and get today because they're one on a five-game winning streak. They're two games over 500, and they've put themselves in a good spot uh, going into this week and want to continue uh, the good habits that Post-8 has had as Greg. Uh, these are two winnable games, but, uh, of course, uh, for Post-8, they're going to come out and, and earn those wins as well. Yeah, and that's and that's a big thing, and and you just you hit the nail on the head when you talked about the fact that that uh, the eights are on a roll right now, having won five in a row, but uh, have an opportunity to 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 uh, cap off this cap off this home stand, possibly push that winning streak all the way to seven before they head on the road tomorrow for the first time, heading out west uh, to face. Rapid City Post 22, and then go into the weekend at the Dakota Classic down in Sioux Falls. And going into that uh, Post 22 game, it would be nice to have that seven-game winning streak. Although, if you heard this morning and a little bit, you know, a couple hours ago, uh, that Coach White not talking about the winning streak, not wanting them to uh, sit back and and uh, reflect on the winning streak, continue to go out and play each game and try and win that next game. Uh, but would be but would, would be nice to have a seven game winning streak uh, taking on 22 uh, tomorrow for your first road game of the regular season. Post State and uh, Aberdeen playing here at 2:30 for a first pitch, about 15 minutes away on Tuesday afternoon of baseball here on KCCR. We will step aside and come back in three minutes with more of the pregame show. You're listening to Post State baseball on a KCCR and on YouTube at KCCR Sports. Insurance. We all need it to protect our homes, health, businesses, and belongings. But having adequate coverage is just the beginning. You also need the support of professionals who stand by your side to protect what's important to you. Fisher Rounds and Associates combines the coverage you want with the commitment you need. Fisher Rounds and Associates. At your service, at your side. With offices in Pier, Mitchell, Watertown, Sioux Falls, and Rapid City. 
Bankwest Insurance has the expertise and resources to deliver personalized service and customized solutions. As an independent agency, we shop dozens of companies to get you the best coverage at the best price. As your trusted choice for insurance coverage, we promise to go the extra mile so you can rest assured your loved ones and your assets are protected. Contact your local agent to put Bankwest Insurance to work for you. Not a deposit, not FDIC insured, not insured by any federal agency, not guaranteed by any bank, may go down in value, equal opportunity provider. Home Care Services is a private agency committed to providing expert advice and specialized care to those who want to remain living independently at home. Home Care Service has a team of nurses, caregivers, and administrative staff that offers a full range of in-home support services to our area. For more information about Home Care Services, call 224-2273. Expert advice, professional care. Home Care Services, 224-2273. At Black Hills Federal Credit Union, our top priority is providing value to our members. Since 1941, we have helped our neighbors buy homes and vehicles, finance their farms and ranches, insure their assets, and retire comfortably. From Custer to Sioux Falls, we live and work in our communities, and we treat our members like family. Visit BHFCU.com to learn more about how you can join. BHFCU is member-owned, not-for-profit, and federally insured by NCUA. Building a home. It's the biggest investment most of us make in a lifetime. Not to mention it's a decision that, well, you pretty much live with day and night. The quality of the workmanship stares back at you like a reflection. It also affects the value of your investment. Choosing the right contractor is critical. Kruger Contracting is that contractor. Call 222-2523. Quality workmanship and materials completed on time. Kruger Contracting. In a word, quality. Call 222-2523. Sioux Nation of Fort Pierre knows what that sound is. It's baseball season. They also know that means it's grilling season. Sioux Nation has the Green Mountain Grill choices that you need for those hot dogs and burgers for tailgating. And let's be honest, you know there will be a steak in there too. Visit Sioux Nation of Fort Pier and see their selection of grills. While you're there, also pick up some seasonings for your grilling needs. Visit Sioux Nation at 504 Deadwood Street, Fort Pier. As we welcome you back here at Hyde Stadium as we are getting set for a doubleheader, actually a triangular here at Hyde Stadium as Post State will play the first and third game as uh, they will take on Aberdeen here in game number one. Elliot Life will get the ball in game number one as uh, John McClure alongside Greg Dean and Greg for Elliot Life. It's uh, been a, uh, he did throw uh, on Saturday uh, just a little bit, but uh, he, looking for another good outing. He was one of the best pitchers uh, for Post State down the stretch, or excuse me, for the Pier Governors down the stretch in the high school season, and looking to continue that here in the summer. And uh, so far, so good. Another chance for that to continue. Yeah, and for Elliott Life, uh, you know, has, has actually had two pretty good outings, five and a third innings thrown in, in two appearances. He got the he got the win in, in his debut uh, for the eights this year against Rapid City Post 22 back on May 28th, I believe it was. Uh, camera, end of May, let's just put it that way. June, it was like June June 1st? June 1st, June 1st yeah. Okay. yeah. Still end of May, still end of May, uh, yeah. beginning of June. <laughs> June, fir June 1st, end of May. Uh, but yeah, uh, Elliot Life, Elliot Life uh, really kind of found his groove, like you said, John, uh, during the month of May. Uh, uh, with the in the second half of the high school season, and then just really, really took off from there, and so, so he has continued that that uh, that stretch of of really good pitching throughout as he as he's come into this post eight season, uh, three point nine four ERA, uh, ten strikeouts in in a five and a third inning. So, so when Elliott is going good, uh, he mixes that fastball in with a with a really sharp curveball off of the you know from the left hander, and so so he. When he's going good, he is really a, a tough, tough pitcher to hit. No Lincoln Keynolls here for post date today. Kate Hinkle will slide up into that uh, top spot. So you go from a 346 batter to a 353 hitter. So uh, those two guys at one and two are pretty good to be one and two. Uh, even without one of those two, it's still a good spot to have Kate Hinkle in that leadoff spot who uh, gets on base a lot. Yeah, and and. Kate Hinkle, 
leads the teams and leads the team in walks with nine. He, he's tied for the team lead in RBIs with eight. Uh, second on the team in, in batting average at 353. So so if if you're without Lincoln Keenholes, sliding Kate Hinkle up into that leadoff spot is is really a nice nice asset for the eights to have. Uh, you, it's not often that you have a have a catcher with with that kind of, of offensive production, uh, you know, in terms of average on base percentage, uh, and so and so that's a real asset for the eights to put at the top of this lineup. At Post State, uh, we will go through that starting lineup and the uh, starting lineup for Aberdeen here in just a little bit as that lineup uh, being handed to Rick Gordon right now. We'll get uh, that lineup for you as well as that starting pitcher for Aberdeen uh, coming up here in just a little bit. We will step aside for another three minutes. You're listening to Post State Baseball on KCCR and on YouTube at KCCR Sports. Looking for your next new or used car, truck, or SUV? Then go no further than the comfort of your own home. Shop online at LambMotor.com. On LambMotor.com, you'll find the vehicles Lambs has in stock. You can schedule a test drive or your vehicle's next tune-up all online. New or used, shop for it all online anywhere you are. Lamb Motor has the right vehicle for you. Lamb Motor in Oneida and online, LambMotor.com. Ah, this is the life. Sitting here, sipping lemonade, basking in the warm sun, and admiring the beauty and the solitude of my very own landscape backyard. You know, I wasn't sure, but I was so glad when I made the call to Andy at Dakota Sprinkler and Landscaping to finally have the work done. Calling Dakota Sprinkler and Landscaping was probably one of the best and the easiest decisions I've ever made. Dakota Sprinkler and Landscaping, 280-4440. That's 280-4440. Nystrom Electrical Contracting in Pierre has been providing professional sales, service, and installation since 1977. Whether you're starting from scratch, new construction, or you're upgrading your current system at your home, farm, or office, give the professionals at Nystrom Electrical Contracting a call. They've got a lot of bright ideas. Call Nystrom today to schedule a free computer-generated estimate. The number is 224-8750, or visit their website at nystromelectric.com. The Association of South Dakota County Weed and Pest Boards reminds all landowners and managers to look for and control noxious weeds this spring and summer. The receding water levels have provided new areas for noxious weeds to establish. Infestations that are found and treated early reduce the cost of control. For help identifying and controlling noxious weeds, call your county weed and pest supervisor or the South Dakota Department of Agriculture. Remember, good neighbors control noxious weeds. As long as you have a local cooperative, you'll never farm alone. At CHS Midwest Cooperative, our team is your team, ready to help you make the decisions that are vital to your operation. From the seed, plant health, and marketing the grain, to fuel to keep you running, the feed to supplement your herds, and the financing programs to make it all possible. We're here for you. Give CHS Midwest Cooperative a call today and let us show you the value of the co-op. Local, loyal, and trusted for generations. Service Master of Peer. It's no secret we clean carpets professionally, but not many people know we clean furniture, kitchens, bathrooms, walls, floors, and windows. We also do fire and water restoration, plus construction cleanups. There's nothing we can't clean. Give Service Master a call at 224 9919. Service Master. The clean you expect, the service you deserve. Service Master, 224 9919. As we welcome you back here to Hyde Stadium as we are getting set for first pitch as Post State will take on uh, the two, take on the Aberdeen Smithies here in game one of this uh, triangular as Post State will host Aberdeen. Sturgis will come to town here in just a little while and will play Aberdeen in game number two and then it will be in game three uh, Post State and Sturgis as Post State is taking the field. Elliot Life is walking to the mound. We go through the starting lineups. First for Aberdeen as Max Pren will lead things off. He's the catcher. Tyler Hoffman will bat second and play second. Aiden McCafferty is the center fielder batting third. Nick Clem is the shortstop batting fourth. Josh Steinwant is the DH batting fifth. Matt Fiach, the first baseman, batting sixth. Brian Holmstrom, the third baseman, batting seventh. Brock Martin, the right fielder, batting eighth. And Connor Canass is the left fielder, batting ninth. Uh, Austin w uh, Wigman is the uh, Wagman is the pitcher for 
Aberdeen Smitty's here in game number one. The left-hander Elliot Life on the mound as he is making his third appearance of the season, second start, a 3.93 ERA and a 2.25 whip as he looks for a solid outing here to open up. And Greg, like you like we said here in the, the opening before our first commercial break, that these are two very winnable games for Post State, uh, but they've got to take care of business here today. They can't expect them uh, to just win without showing up. Yeah, uh, Aberdeen comes into today 7-15 and 15 on the year, uh, 22 games under their belt, but Aberdeen, one of the one of the two teams, uh, Class A teams in South Dakota that did not field a high school team. So, so they actually started their their Legion season back in early May. And so, so uh, for you know, if you if you think about it in that context, uh, you know they're they're a little bit behind uh, behind Post Eight in terms of games. Uh, the, the Post Eight players. 26 games during the the high school season now 12 games in so they've actually got 38 games under their belt most of these young men do as Elliot life will get on the rubber he's ready to go max Prentice at the plates some afternoon baseball for you here on kccr as the left hander will deliver the first pitch that's taken high for ball one at 227 just three minutes ahead of schedule as we're underway here on a beautiful tuesday afternoon here's the 1-0 pitch that will come inside and it's quickly 2-0 here on the leadoff hitter, Max Pren. Who in last game went one for two against Groton Legion. Here's the 2-0 pitch. There's a swing and a miss. It's now 2-1 to the leadoff man. As we'll go through the defensive positioning here for Post State. Here shortly the 2-1 pitch from the left-hander. That one's popped foul on the right side. It will land foul as... The right fielder and Brecken Kruger was on his horse, couldn't get to it. And the count's now 2-2, two and two, so good job from Elliott Life. Was down 2-0 on the first hitter. Got it back to 2-2, two, two, trying to retire the first man here in game one of this uh, triangular. As Post-8 will play the bookends of game one and three. Here's a 2-2 two, two from Life. Way upstairs is now 3-2. and two. Be followed by Tyler Hoffman and Aiden McCafferty here in the top of the first. Here's a 3-2 pitch. That will bounce in, so a leadoff walk issued by Life. And that will bring up Tyler Hoffman, the second baseman. And as you go through, as you go through this, this Aberdeen lineup, uh, you see that it's actually, a, even though they're, they've only got seven wins on the board, they're actually a pretty good, pretty good offensive lineup. Five, five batters in this lineup actually have uh, OPS OPSs of over one I mean that's that's a good offensive lineup I mean so they can put some runs on the board so so for the eights to be successful today against Aberdeen they're going to have to play good defense and get good pitching first pitch was taken for a strike there's the 0 one pitch that's popped foul and out of play and is now quickly 0-2 here the number two hitter Tyler Hoffman who went one for three against Grown with two RBIs this team in the last three games even though they're one and two have scored 34 runs, averaging over 10 runs, actually over, averaging over 11 runs a game in their last three, but yet have dropped two of those three decisions, losing two to uh, Renner, number two, and then beating Groton in their last game. Here's the one-two pitch now from LA Life. It's upstairs and it's quickly two and two with Max Pren, the catcher, uh, on at first base. Aiden McCafferty, the center fielder, is on deck. Life will come set from the stretch. Here's the 2-2 two -two pitch. Once upstairs, and it's now 3-2. And, and life's in danger of walking the first two hitters here to open up the ball game. We'll see if Pren goes in motion here. The 3-2 three pitch. That one's popped up on the infield in foul territory. Bennett Dean will call for it and can't make the catch. Actually, him and Kate Hinkle had a little bit of miscommunication on who was going to take it and ends up dropping on the first base side in foul territory, so the at bat will continue here. Yeah, I, I heard heard somebody make a call for it, and I wasn't quite sure who it was. And then, and then um, there seemed to be some confusion between Hinkle and Dean, and then they kind of ended up looking at each other at the very end, and and unfortunately dropped dropped in foul territory. But uh, end result for the eighth turns out pretty good. And Tyler Hoffman will swing and miss and strike out for the first out here in the top of the first inning. 
And they'll bring up Aiden McCafferty, the center fielder, who's been in that number three spot for Aberdeen. Boy, he's hit the ball really well as of late. Eight hits in his last three games. First pitch is over for strike one. So he's a dangerous man at the plate. He's got eight RBIs to go along with those eight hits in his last uh, last three games. Here's the 0-1 pitch. I don't know, we'll bounce in. It's not 1-1. One one. I think a heavy dose of some curveballs is probably a good thing to throw this number three hitter. McCaffrey leads, leads the Smitties in most offensive categories. Here's the 1-1 pitch. That one's at the letters and it's now one and two. Through 22 games, McCafferty has 28 hits, uh, eight doubles, four home runs on the year. Uh, that's that's probably the number that stands out in addition to 22 RBIs and 28 runs scored in just 22 games. One, two pitches lined in the left field for a base hit. He continues to swing the hot bat. And it's now first and second for the number four hitter, Nick Clemens, the shortstop to come to the plate. As defensively for Post State, Jack Merquan's out in left field. McGuire Rasky in center, uh, Brecken Kruger at right, Andy Gordon at third base, Matt Hansen the shortstop, Jaden Weeby the second baseman, Bennett Dean at first, Kate Hinkle behind the plate, and Elliot Life is on the mound. Here's the first pitch to Clemens is over for strike one. Good fastball there. Looks like that might have been the fastest pitch that Life has thrown so far in the first four hitters. Yeah, and, and again, we've talked about it before. Sometimes this first inning can be the, the most challenging inning for for any for any starting pitcher. There's a ground ball up the middle through for a base hit. Run will come around. The throw coming to the plates is up the line and safe at home as Pren, a RBI one-out one RBI single for Nick Clemens. And Aberdeen strikes first here in this opening game of the triangular. And again, the the top the top five six batters in this Aberdeen order can really swing the stick. Uh, uh, we look at, at just the top five. Uh, Pren comes in the leadoff hitter. The comes in hitting 333. Then Hoffman at 370. McCafferty at 424. Clemens at 314. And now Josh Steinwalt, uh, the designated hitter at 396. And and we haven't even talked about the number six hitter, Matt Fiock at 420. First pitch to Steinwan is taken for strike one. Here's the 0-1 pitch, and it'll get in the dirt, get to the backstop, and it's now second and third here with one down. As both runners will move up 90 feet, and they're both in scoring position. Steinwan on the year, uh, played in 19 games. He's got 21 hits and 53 at bats. Three doubles, a triple, two home runs on the year. Second on the team in home runs. 13 RBIs, 15 runs scored to go with a 396 batting average. 1-1 one, one pitch is on the outside edge and it's now one and two. Life will go back to work from the windup here with runners at second and third base. Corners are in, middle is still back. Here's a one-two pitch. There's a chopper right in front of the plate and it'll roll foul. And it remains at one and two. Kind of a defensive swing from the left-handed hitting Steinwant uh, versus the left-hander life on the mound. Here's a one-two pitch. One's high and outside, and the count's even at two balls and two strikes. Matt Fiak is on deck. He'll be followed by Brian Holmstrom, the third baseman. That's the number seven man in the order. Two singles and a walk. Been the three base runners. A one-nothing lead for Aberdeen here at the top of the first. There's a swing and a miss by Steinwant, who was... Not expecting that curveball, couldn't hold back in time. So two strikeouts now, both swinging for Elliott Life, and there's two away, and a ground ball can limit the damage with the Matt Fiak, who is hitting over 400 coming in this game. 20 some games in the season, still hitting over 400. Yeah, Fiak hitting 420 on the year, uh, has eight doubles, 21 hits total out of 50 at bats. 13 singles, eight doubles, 17 RBIs. He's second on the team in RBIs behind behind McCafferty. 525 on base percentage. So, so this is a young man that that knows how to swing the stick, get on base. First two pitches missed to Fiak and is quickly two and zero. Oh. Runners at second and third, here with two away. Trying to keep the first two pitches have been low. Trying to keep things low here on Fiak. Two zero -oh pitch. That one's lined in the left field. That one's up in the zone. It's a base hit. One run will come in to score. The throw coming towards the plate will be wide of home plate, and it's a two-out, two-RBI single for Fiak, and it's a 3-0 lead here for Aberdeen. 
Aberdeen continues to to have have good at bats, good offensive output, and and so what what Post State needs to do is is come back and answer that when they have an opportunity here in the bottom of the first. But right now, for Elliott Life, the biggest thing right now is just limit the damage and and try to get try to get the green and white back to back to the dugout. First pitch is upstairs for ball one to Brian Holmstrom, the third baseman. With a runner on first base, two away here at the top of the first, a 3 nothing lead for Aberdeen. Here's a 1-0 pitch. That one will miss slow and away, and it's now 2-0. 89 degrees at first pitch, partly cloudy skies here at Historic Hyatt Stadium. The the eights in their, in their green tops, white pants, black and white caps, black lettering, black numbers outlined in white uh, for Aberdeen. All gray jerseys, gray tops, gray pants, black numbers, black lettering across the front. Again, outlined in white. Swing and a miss on the 2-0 pitch. Now here's a 2-1 from Life. There's another swing and a miss by Holmstrom. It is now 2-2. Two 3-0 two. lead here for Aberdeen at the top of the first inning. An RBI single from Nick Clemens and a two RBI single from Matt Fiak. Here's a 2-2 two -two pitch. That one will get to the backstop. Fiak will take off for second, and the count's now full of three and two. And on deck is Brock Martin, the number eight hitter, the right fielder. Three hits in the inning, three runs have scored. From the stretch, here's a 2-2 pitch. Swing and a miss by Holmstrom, and life will strike out the side, but... Three run score on three hits, no errors, and one man left on base. We head to the bottom of the first. Post 8 down 3 0. You're listening to Post 8 Baseball on KCCR and on YouTube at KCCR Sports. At Shane's Pharmacy, your health care is important, and Shane wants to be the pharmacist to take care of you. Shane's Pharmacy will make sure your prescriptions are filled in a timely manner. They will answer your questions, and they will even deliver to your home or office. Call 223-9200. Shane's Pharmacy, the pharmacy you know and trust. The number again is 223-9200. Shane's Pharmacy in Fort Pierre, proud to support high school athletics. ComTech and Pier invites you to come out and check out their expansive showroom. It's filled with everything you need to thrive in today's technology-dependent world and a knowledgeable staff to guide you through. ComTech has TVs, computers, personal electronics to commercial electronics, anything to fit your technology needs. The experienced professionals at ComTech can guide you through any questions you may have. Whether you struggle with technology or live for it, ComTech can help you find exactly what you're looking for. ComTech will even install and service what they sell so you don't have to worry once you get your products home. ComTech, located at 1601 North Lowell Avenue behind Walmart. Check them out online at ComTech. As we welcome you back here to Hyde Stadium, a 3-0 lead for Aberdeen to open up this ball game. John McVeigh alongside Greg Dean as we go through the post-8 batting order. Kate Hinkle will lead things off. He's catching. Jane Weeby, the second baseman, will bat second. Andy Gordon, the third baseman, batting third. Bennett Dean, the first baseman, will be in the cleanup spot. McGuire Rasky, the center fielder, batting fifth. Matt Hansen, the shortstop, batting sixth. Gary Nedved will bat seventh and DH. Jack Merquan will hit eighth and play left field. And Brecken Curry, the right fielder, rounds out the order for the eights as they will go against Austin Wegman, who will get the start here in this ball game, the ninth appearance so far the season for Wagman, who has been used the most uh, for uh, Aberdeen. Yep, ninth appearance on the year is sixth start. Uh, leads the team in starts, but only... Only 21 innings of work through through those eight appearances so far uh, has a 12.67 ERA. So he's he's given up on average of over two runs an inning. Uh, so so kind of had a rough go so far. But uh, obviously obviously the the Aberdeen coaching staff has has confidence in him as they they continue to to put him out in front of the the starts on on this team. Hinkle will dribble one in front of the plate and then it will be thrown away by the pitcher Wagman. So Hinkle will get to second on the leadoff air. and be charged to the pitcher. So a, a start that looked like it was going to be an easy ground out. But instead, Hinkle's on at second to bring up Jaden Wiebe. And that's, I think, one of, the, one of the challenges that this Aberdeen team has had. Not only is their collectively their team ERA up over seven, but they've given up uh, 62 unearned runs through 22 games. So they're averaging... Uh, 
more than three unearned runs a game, and and so that speaks to the fact that they probably have have a little bit of trouble fielding the ball, leading to the, all those unearned runs. First pitch to Jaden Weeby was taken for a strike. Here's now the 0-1 pitch from Wagman, and will bounce in. And it's now one and one. Good block there by the uh, catcher Pren. As we'll go through the defensive positioning here shortly for the Smitties. Here's a 1-1 pitch to Weeby. That comes in and hits him. So now there's first and second here with nobody out. Here in the bottom of the first inning for now Andy Gordon. Yeah, ball that got away from Wagaman and and so now the eight's got a little something going. Hopefully they can they can retaliate uh, after giving up that three spot in the top of the first. I mean, you really need to come back and at least put something on the board uh, to try and, and at least have contact contact with this Aberdeen Smitty team because, like we said, they they are a very good offensive team. So you don't want them to to get out in front and stay out in front. First pitch to Andy Gordon is a hit foul as. Both him and Hinkle, the, the two swings with contact so far have been uh, well out in front, barely getting a piece of it. Here's the, now the 0-1 pitch from a Wagman. And Gordon will float this one into left field. That will drop in for a base hit. And the bases will now be loaded here with nobody out to bring up the cleanup hitter, Bennett Dean. Canis, the, the Aberdeen left fielder, probably playing closer to the line than just about any any left fielder that we've seen so far in this in this initial homestand for uh, for any opposing team that has that has played against post eight so far so left a lot of room out in left center for the right-handed hitters first pitch is outside for ball one as it is uh, Canis out in left field McCafferty in center Martin in right Holmstrom at third Clemens at short Hoffman at second Fiak at first Pren behind the plate as Wegman will deliver the 1-0 pitch. That's grounded past the diving Fiak at first base and in the right field. One run will come in to score. Here comes the next run coming to the plate. The throw is not in time. Sliding in safely is Weeby. As it's going to be a two RBI single for Dean. He'll advance to the throw as second and third with nobody out. And post eight has quickly cut the lead right back down to one. Yeah, just a sharp ground ball to the right side off of the bat of Bennett Dean underneath the glove of, of Matt Fiak at first base and, and a strong throw from Martin out in right field and, and Jaden Wiebe just able to slide in underneath the tag of Mac, Max Print at home plate. And, and so even though the eights gave up a, a three spot in the top of the first, they've got two of them back and they still don't have anybody out and runners in scoring position. The guy that's tied for the team leading RBI is McGuire, uh, right below the team leading RBI is McGuire Rasky as he's got six so far uh, just behind Hinkle and Gordon with those eight. As Benedine also now with eight RBI, so he'll tie that team team high, but McGuire Rasky can easily get to that with the point with the base hit here. 1 0 pitch misses and is now 2 0. Rasky back in the lineup after being out for the last week or so as he has runners in score position for that first at bat 2-0 pitch is taken for a strike and is now 2 and 1 here to McGuire Rasky Rasky coming into the day hitting 667 uh, even though he's only got 3 games under his belt but 9 or 6 for 9 on the year Rasky will foul it the other way so the count is now 2 and 2 has a double, six RBIs, five runs scored on the year to go with four walks. So uh, even though even though he hasn't had a whole lot of at bats, uh, the, the production for for this for this veteran continues to continues to work. As there's a ground ball to the left side, it's going to be fielded by the shortstop in a Clemens. The throw to first is in time, so it'll be an RBI ground out as Gordon came in to score on contact. Dean will move to third base on the throw, and in there is now one down, but it is a 3-3 tie as Post 8 has quickly responded to come back and tie this game up with the first five hitters with the final one being an RBI ground out, 6-3 on the putout. Here's going to be Matt Hansen, a chance to give Post 8 now the lead. First pitch misses inside for ball one. Just 90 feet away is Bennett Dean. It was a good start for Aberdeen, quickly could be erased. That one's popped up on the infield. Charging in is going to be the shortstop Clemens to make the catch, and there's now two down. And it'll bring up Gary Nedvet trying to give Post State a lead. 
Yeah, and and again, uh, having runners in scoring position with with just one out uh, or able to plate one of them would really be nice if post eight, post eight could find a way to to get this other run across and and take a lead after the first inning. First pitch misses outside for ball one to uh, Gary Nedved, the DH. As it, Nedved, he comes in hitting 188. Looking for his second RBI. If he can get one for a base hit, there's a ground ball to the shortstop, Clemens. He'll field. The throw to first is going to be in time. So the uh, go-ahead run is left stranded on at first base. But three runs do come in to score on a two hits in the inning. One air and one man left on base. We head to the top of the second. It's tied up 3-3 between Post 8 and Aberdeen. You listen to Post 8 Baseball on KCCR and on YouTube at KCCR Sports. South Dakota didn't always have a capital, or even a permanent settlement for that matter. There wasn't always a river city on the Missouri River. And before First Dakota filed the first charter in 1872, there wasn't always a bank in South Dakota. Every timeless institution, tradition, and thriving business was started somewhere by someone who had a dream and the passion to make it happen first. What will be your South Dakota first? Visit firstdakota.com slash first. Member FDIC. Do you need the Pure Governor Apparel for the big game? Or how about Stanley County Apparel or Post State Apparel? All Around Graphics and Pure is your place to go. Not only can you get your apparel, but they also do screen printing, jerseys, awards, and trophies. And did you know they can print and customize your signs? All Around Graphics can do it all. Located at 819 North Euclid Avenue or call 224-4677. All Around Graphics and Pier, your one-stop shop. Time of the second inning. It is 3-3 uh, as we have 8-9-1 and one for Aberdeen. As Brock Martin and Connor uh, Canis and Max Pren will be the first three hitters. He might reach his base to go to Tyler Hoffman. Ellie Life, who gave up those three runs, he did strike out all three, uh, the three guys for the three outs at the top of the first inning. So it was one where he gave up those three hits and a walk, but he looked pretty sharp in the other three batters that he retired. As he'll look to, to do the same here at the top of the second. Brock Martin to lead things off the lefty right fielder. We'll go against the left-handed throwing Elliott Live. First pitch is taken high for ball one. And what uh, what you'd really like to see out of Elliott Life right here is a is a good quick inning to get to get the eights back in the dugout, get their stick, get the sticks in their hand, and and have an opportunity to build on that three run three run first inning. 1-0 pitch will miss low for ball two. As Life will deliver from the windup 2-0 pitch. That one is over for a strike. He got behind the first hitter in the top of the first 2-0. Came back to make it 2-2, end up walking that first hitter. Here's the 2-1 pitch. That one is on the outside edge, and it's now 2-2. Two two. For a different outcome here in the, this first batter of this top of the second. Here's a 2-2 two -two pitch. Just missing outside. A little low and outside, trying to inch that quarter away. A little Greg Maddox from LA Life. Here's the, now the 3-2 pitch. That one will also miss. So, uh, again, after going down 2-0 in the count on the first hitter, he comes back to make it 2-2 and ends up walking the leadoff hitter, Brock Martin now. And it's Connor Candice will come to the plate, the left fielder. As the top of the order is waiting on deck. That came around to score three times in the top of the first inning. Here's the first pitch to the number nine hitter, Candice, upstairs for ball one. Life is, life has just had a little bit of trouble being consistent around the zone. He's he's been high, he's he's been low a couple times. Uh, so so once he gets dialed in and, and is able to find the groove, he should be okay. But but just just having a little trouble with the consistency right now. One zero pitches upstairs and is now two and zero. And this is an offense, you know, walks are never good, but when you, you're playing an offense that scored 34 runs in the last three games, you don't want to give them any any kind of extra help by putting guys on base for them without having to swing the bat because they do a good enough job swinging the bat and getting on base themselves. 2-0 pitch was over for a strike. Now here's a 2-1. There's a big swing and a miss, and it's now 2-2. Two and two To Connor Candice with Max Pran on deck. Meets. 
The eights have been successful over this five-game winning streak, and, and a lot of that has come from the fact that the pitching has gotten better, primarily from the fact that that they have they have really the pitching staff's really begun to limit the walks, and and they've not put themselves behind the eight ball as much as they were in the first first nine games of the year. Two two pitches, bounce in the dirt, good block there by Hinkle. When well, the count is full at three and two, and we'll see if. Martin will go in motion. The number nine hitter of the plate. Here's a 3-2 pitch. There's a fly ball out to right field. Greg and Kruger going over. He will make the catch. Made the catch on the run and retreating back to first base will be Martin. And the first time that an Aberdeen Smitty has been retired with the ball put in play. One down here at the top of the second. And there here's Max Prend back to the top of the order who walked and came around to score the game's first run, leading off the first inning. Nice play by Brecken Kruger, playing playing pretty much straight away, maybe shading the, shading the line just a little bit. Here's a ground ball that eats up Gordon to, right underneath the glove of Gordon and into left field. And there's now two on here with one down to bring up Tyler Hoffman. Yeah, a sharp hit ground ball that just kind of short hop Gordon over at third base. They call it the hot corner for a reason. I mean, and that's that's a prime example. Just uh, a ball that that Andy Gordon went down to one knee to try to try to try to feel and just was not able to come up with it. And ball goes on into left field and 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 so now Aberdeen has runners first and second with just one out. Here is Tyler Hoffman, the second baseman. First pitch misses just a bit upstairs. Here's the 1-0 pitch. That one is sky to left field. Jack Merquan will shade to his right. He'll make the catch, and there's now two down. And that'll bring up Aiden McCafferty. As let's see if post State can get a big zero here. It doesn't happen very often. I mean, 11 runs in the first game. Or excuse me, eight runs in the first game against Renner. End up losing that game 10-8. Uh, to eight. Or eight to six, I, yeah, eight to six they lost, and then end up losing seventeen to sixteen in that second game. As the first pitch was taken for a ball, here's the one zero pitch. It'll come inside of McCafferty, and it's now two and zero. Wind is blowing in today, uh, out of the southeast. At, at 22 miles an hour, so the wind's kind of blowing in from from left left center today. So so it's going to take take a pretty good shot to get get a ball even to the warning track today. 2-0 pitch is outside. It's now three and zero. McCafferty did hit three home runs in that doubleheader against Runner. Two in game number one, and another in that second game. Here's the three zero pitch. That one is at the knees, and it's now three and one. That's a a pitch, if you're going to have the green light on 3-0, and you're still not swinging at it because that one was not uh, a get-me-over strike. Here's a 3-1 pitch. McCafferty will ground it over the third baseman, Gordon Hill Field, and step on the bag at third to retire the side. And we will be, get a big zero here at the top of the second. No runs on a one air, uh, no hits, and a two men left on base. We head to the Bottom of the second, it is a 3-3 game between Pier and Aberdeen. You listen to Post State Baseball on KCCR and on YouTube at KCCR Sports. At Kegra in Highmore, we pride ourselves on providing our customers with reliable markets, superior services, and quality products. From corn and soybeans to spring and winter wheat, you can trust Agtegra in Highmore with all your grain handling needs. It's all about helping you achieve the best harvest possible. Call Agtegra of Highmore today at 605-846-1379. That's 605-846-1379. Are you building a new home or remodeling the old? Adding a fireplace can make a house a home. Olson Plumbing and Pier carries a full line of heat elator fireplaces. Whether your taste is traditional or contemporary, Olson Plumbing has a great selection of heat elator fireplaces that will fit any style. Whether you're building new or updating, call Olson Plumbing. Heat elator fireplaces, the first name in fireplaces. Olson Plumbing and Pier is your source for the industry's largest selection of indoor outdoor fireplaces, either gas or wood, and outdoor fire pits. Stop by their showroom at 2803 East Wells or give them a call 224-6436. Bottom of the second inning, it is a 3-3 game between Pierre and Aberdeen as it will be 8-9-1 and one for Post 8. Jack Merquan, Brecken Kruger, and uh, Kate Hinkle. He might reach his base. It'll be then to uh, Jaden Weeby. Post 8 scored three runs on two hits. He took advantage of a Aberdeen air. 
that allowed them to score those three runs to tie the ball game up after Aberdeen. That good uh, good hitting Aberdeen Smitty team took a quick three nothing lead on Post State and Greg. That, that's a you know you're, you're sitting tied right now and even if you go to the top of the third sitting three three that three spot in the bottom of the first inning is is a big one in this ball game. It is, and, and you know, it just gives you a little confidence and and a little, uh, just a little boost to say, you know, we can we can match this Aberdeen team uh, blow for blow if we have to, and and that may be what it takes. I mean, this is a, like we said, an Aberdeen team that, that hits the ball really well, and so what we're looking to do is is really come out and and just stay stay blow for blow with these guys. As Jack Merquan will be the leadoff hitter. Here in the bottom of the second inning, Merquan is hitting 219 right now. First pitch to him comes inside for ball one. And and Jack Merquan struggled a little bit early on in this Legion season, but has has started to show some signs of, of coming out of that. Had a two hit game the other day, and and so so I think sometimes you know you just need you just need that one game to to kind of have a breakout and get get back on the you know get back on the level as the 2-0 pitch is taken for a strike and it's count now two and one here to Jack Merquan leadoff man here in the bottom of the second that one will miss outside as Merquan may be looking for that leadoff walk here in the bottom of the second 3-1 is the count to Merquan Burke and Kruger the right fielder he is on deck he followed by Kate Hinkle Here's a 3-1. Comes inside and it is a leadoff walk. And that'll bring up Brecken Kruger. And we've talked about it. Leadoff walks. Leadoff walks come back to bite you a lot of times. And, and we'll see if the if the eights can make some hay out of this. So Kruger will step to the plate. Picked up an RBI so far this season as that one will be line foul. Pass coach Nathan Nas over at third base. Coach White down the dugout, but is not coaching third base today. We'll return to that spot shortly where Nas will go back to the first base side, but Nas had no motion to even move with that foul ball being lined to him. Here's the 0-1 pitch. Runner is taken for a strike. Runner takes off for a second. The throw to second and tagged out at second base is Merquant. If he thought maybe there's a hit and run or what might have been the case, but Merquan didn't slide in the second until very, very late. So the leadoff man is retired, trying to steal. And the count's now 0-2 here to Kruger. Nice throw from Max Pren behind the plate uh, and and just uh, was able to get, get Merquan by about two steps. Uh, and so so all of a sudden, after that leadoff walk, uh, now with the with the retirement of, of Merquan at second base on the attempted steal and now a strikeout. Everything's sitting pretty well here in the bottom of the second. Yeah, here's Kate Hinkle with two outs. Here's a ground ball to the second baseman. Hoffman will stab at it and throw to first to get a unconventional 1-2-3 inning as Post State will head to the top of the third with Aberdeen tied 3-3. You're listening to Post State Baseball on a KCCR and on YouTube at KCCR Sports. Ferdinand Electric has a long history of doing electrical work the right way. Economical service, professional work, and customer satisfaction is why they can say that. Ferdinand Electric can do residential, farm, and commercial projects. Doesn't matter if they are charged with new construction or a remodel project, they get it conducted. Contact the staff at Ferdinand Electric at 224-8684. They can light a spark into your next project. Ferdinand Electric, 224-8684. Are you driving a 2014 or newer vehicle? Are there less than 100,000 miles on it? Gateway Ford Lincoln Toyota in Pierce prepared to give you top dollar. Again, if your ride is 2014 or newer with less than 100,000 miles, Gateway Ford Lincoln Toyota will give you top dollar for it right now. Trade it in or sell it to us. Doesn't matter. Your vehicle has never been worth more than it is right now. Stop in at 518 East Sioux Avenue in Pierre. Call 605-224-7378 and visit gatewayflt.com. Top of the third inning, it is a 3-3 game between uh, Post State and Aberdeen. John Winkler alongside Greg Dean uh, 
as it will be four, five, and six. Nick Clements, Josh Steinwant, and Matt Fiok be the first three hitters for this Aberdeen Smitty's team. First of three games here at Hyatt Stadium. First of two for the uh, for Post State as they will play here in game number one. We'll take a game break as Aberdeen and Sturgis will play in game number two, and then we'll return for game number three right around seven o'clock or so as uh, Post State will take on Sturgis in that final game. And then we hit the road, which will feel like forever, even though we return next Tuesday to be back at home. And we'll hit the road for a Wednesday doubleheader tomorrow at Post 22 at the uh, Rapid City New Renovated Fitzgerald. First pitch is over for strike one to the number 40, Nick Clements, and then to the Dakota Classic, part of the uh, Sioux Falls West Pool. We play at, at Harmon and Park. 0-1 pitch. That will bounce in. It's now 1-1. One one. Elliot Life uh, with, with those two pitches to open up the third inning already at 56 pitches on the day. And, and again, just struggling to be a little bit consistent. Uh, and, and, again, the 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 walks and the strikeouts are pushing up his pitch count. He's got two walks and three strikeouts on the day already. Uh, on the other side, Austin Wagman, just 27 pitches through two innings for the Smitties. Clemens is ahead in the count, 2-1, to one, the 2-1 two pitch. There's a line shot into center field, and it will be one hopper off of Rasky, and then it gets past him. And Clemens will run and get to second base. Rasky will pick it back up as he had to chase that one down. So it'll be a single and an air to open up the top of the third inning. Yeah, just a, just a line drive off the bat of uh, off the bat of, of Clemens and, and kind of short hop Rasky. Kind of caught him a little bit by surprise and, and he didn't, what, I don't know that he was quite expecting the ball to, to come up on him that quick. First pitch to Steinwan who struck out swinging his first at bat. Takes strike one. But a runner in score position here with nobody out in the top of the third inning. Here's the one pitch. The curveball that stays just a bit upstairs, crossing the strike zone a bit upstairs. Not where the catcher catches it, where it's across the strike zone. Hinkle caught it, looked like it was right down the middle. Where it crossed the plate was high, deemed by the umpire. There's a 1-1 one -one pitch that's lined in the right field. That will one hop in front of Kruger. And it'll be now first and third here with nobody out. As boy, if those first two hits, if, if Kruger and Rasky are just a step in, and I'm not saying that they should have been a step in, but if they're a step in, that's it's two outs with nobody on. That's how close the, those one hoppers have been in front of uh, both Rasky and Kruger. Yeah, and I, I think especially, you know, in a 3-3 ball game, you know, both both times Rasky in center, Kruger in right, playing it safe. I mean, making sure the ball stays in front of them. Fiak will swing and foul the first pitch back to the netting. And it's 0-1. He had the two RBI single to give Aberdeen a 3 nothing lead at that point in the top of the first inning. And now the Smitties are threatening here to score again. Here's the 0-1 pitch. That one is taken for a strike and a slow curveball from uh, Elliott Life. Fiak second on the team in terms of batting average at 420. Like we said, 21 hits and 50 at bats, eight doubles on the year uh, for, for the first baseman. 0-2 pitch, runner resolve of the pitch, and Fiak will foul it out of play. A line out on the left side and still is 0-2. Here with nobody out in the top of the third inning. Post State has won five in a row. They're seven and five now in the season. Here's the 0-2 pitch from LA Live to Fiak. That one's popped up into shallow center field. Hanson will call for it. Takes a couple steps back on the infield and makes the catch. And there's a big first out because now you're at ground ball away from getting out of the inning with uh, Brian Holmstrom to come to the plate. And again, uh, Hansen, Hansen goes back a couple steps on the grass and then actually has to come in in a couple steps. And again, I think that reflects uh, that the wind, wind got, got a hold of that one, kind of brought it back a little bit. Here's the first pitch to Holmstrom. He'll swing and miss, and that's 0-1. Obviously, the wind yeah, played a part in that too, but as you're taught, you've got to get behind the ball. It's easier to come in on a ball, uh, especially on the infield, than have to try and backpedal your way to make the catch. Here's the 0-1 pitch, runner takes off. That'll be a pitch in the dirt. So it's now one and one and taking second base will be Steinwatt. And it's first and, or excuse me, second and third with one down. Here's 1-1 one, one pitch. 
That will also get in the dirt. Another good block there by Hankel, and it's two and one. Eights bring the infield in on the corners. They're playing back in the middle infield. Again, if anything that uh, that's coming to the coming to the corners, they'll look the runner back at third, probably try to take the out at first. Here's a 2-1 pitch. Outside is now 3-1. and one. On deck is Brock Martin, who drew a walk in his first plate appearance. With the base open, you don't have to be enough to give in to Holmstrom. Here's the 3-1 pitch. There's a big swing and a miss. It's now 3-2. and two. Good pitch there from life. Around the knees. Where Holmstrom really had a chance to only pop it straight up or hit it straight on the ground. Here's a 3-2 pitch. That one misses outside. And it's the third walk that's been issued by Elliott Life. And the bases are now loaded here for the number eight hitter, Brock Martin. Martin comes into the game hitting 289 on the year, uh, has appeared in 18 of the 22 Aberdeen games so far, 13 hits and 45 at bats. First pitch is over for strike one to the right fielder, Martin. Again, the corner will stay in, but the middle will stay back because a ground ball can turn a double play to get you out of the game without a run scoring. One, oh, one pitch is fouled back off the mask of the home plate umpire. As Kate Hinkle will make his way out and talk with the starting pitcher, Elliot Life, to give him a little bit of time. That one didn't catch the mask flush for the home plate umpire. Kind of almost caught to the side. Which even if it catches it flush, it still doesn't feel good, but it might feel a little bit better. Kind of caught the mask and then maybe ricocheted back down into the into the left shoulder and the the umpires wear wear chest protectors underneath their underneath their shirts and, and typically they have some kind of padding and protective uh, guards up around the shoulders. But but if if that ball comes off the mask and drives into that drives into that shoulder shoulder guard, I mean that's still gonna still gonna leave a mark. Count is 0-2, back to baseball as Elliott live from the windup. He'll deliver the 0-2 pitch. Just a bit outside. A big tick there from Brock Martin, not to chase. So it's now 1-2. From the windup, 1-2 pitch. Ground ball to Gordon. Takes a weird hop on Gordon. He can't make the play. Made a diving play, but it, Rick, it went off uh, going the left side. The spin that it had on it for Gordon to even dive to make the, the stab on it was impressive, but he couldn't make a play after it, and it's going to be an infield single and an RBI where it looked like it was at least tailor-made to get the out at home without that run scoring, but it's an RBI single. Yeah, left-handed hitting. Martwin just cue-balled one off the end of the bat, and like you said, John, it had so much side spin on it that that Andy Gordon came in, tried to field it on one hop, but when it hit the grass, I mean, it actually moved about about three feet to the right, and and uh, and Gordon did a great job, like you said, just able to put a glove on that ball. Otherwise, potentially might have ended up scoring two runs for Aberdeen. Oh, one pitch to Connor Canis, or excuse me, to yeah, Connor Canis is taken for ball one. That bounce in. Here's now the one-one pitch. That one is taken for a strike. It's now one and two. And, and Gordon was was charging in to the ball that was to his to his right hand, and ended up having to lay out to his left to make that play. The one-two pitch is taken for a strike, and there's strike three. The fourth strike out of the ball game for Elliott Life. There's now two down and a big second out. And ground ball will get you out with the limited damage. With Aberdeen taking just a 4-3 lead right now. But it is the top of the order for Max Pren, who is uh, 0 for 1. He reached on an air back at the top of the second. First pitch is over for strike one. Yeah, and this is a big at bat right now for the for Elliott Light life in the eights. I mean, if they can again limit this damage to just the one run and leave the bases loaded again for Aberdeen, that's a that's a big deal. A one pitch is cued off the end of the bat, but this time it's foul. And it's quickly 0-2 here to the leadoff man in the order, the catcher for Aberdeen. This is the spot where life just needs to go and be aggressive, just needs to go challenge Pren. He's got him down 0-2. Here is the 0-2 pitch. There's a ground ball. That'll be foul. And we will do it again here at 0-2. Sometimes, sometimes pitchers get up 0-2, and then they tend to, tend to try to nibble a little bit too much and, 
and maybe try to try to get up, get the hitters to chase something. And right now, I just need to go challenge. As there's a line shot goes off the glove of Andy Gordon, it, he will get to the bag. He'll win the race to the bag at third base. He leapt high for it, went off the bottom of his glove. He was able to pick it up at the foul line and was able to race to the bag at third and tag out to the, uh, get the runner on the force out to keep any more runs for coming in to score. Boy, an odd, end to the, an odd inning itself. One run comes in to score on a t three hits in the inning. There were no errors and three men left on base. We head to the bottom of the third inning. It's a 4-3 lead for Aberdeen over Post 8. Your list of Post 8 baseball here on KCCR and on YouTube at KCCR Sports. Overhead Door Company of Pier is a locally owned business specializing in the sale, service, and installation of residential and commercial garage doors. They provide quality, dependable products with constant service and the peace of mind you need. Overhead Door is one of the most recognized and most respected brand in the garage door industry. For installation and repairs, call Overhead Door Company today at 224-6200. That's 224-6200. Wondering what to do with the pitted and rutted drive? B&B Equipment will get you covered. Wanting to put something down the ground? B&B Equipment will put a hole in your project. Need to even up that property? B&B Equipment can fill that need. B&B Equipment can deliver all your gravel and material needs. B&B Equipment is here for all your excavation needs. Contact B&B Equipment, 224-6727. A contractor here for you. That's B&B Equipment, 224-6727. We welcome you back here, bottom of the third inning at Hyatt Stadium. Jane Weeby, Andy Gordon, and Benedine will be the first three hitters, two, three, and four. As crazy train plays here at Hyatt Stadium. Boy, that was a crazy top of the third inning. <laughs> a perfect song choice to go in between innings. Both stays going to try and answer back after Aberdeen scored on the RBI infield single from Brock Martin on a ball that he cued off the end of the bat that was to Andy Gordon's right, and then end up having to make a diving play to his left just to keep the ball uh, from going too far away from anybody else for more runs to come in to score. So as Jane Weeby to lead things off here in the bottom of the third, was hit by a pitch and came around to score on the RBI, two RBI single from Bennett Dean, who will hit third this inning. Here's the first pitch from Wegman to Weeby. That's taken for a strike. We're underway here in the bottom of the third. Weeby comes in two today, hitting 250 on the year, seven hits and 28 at bats. He leads the team in doubles with three, seven RBIs, four runs scored on the year. Here's a ground ball to third baseman Holmstrom, and throw to first is in time. Leadoff man is retired as Andy Gordon will come to the plate, and he's going, why can't I get a ground ball like that? <laughs> at, at, at any point here in this ball game, he's uh, had a lot of hard hits, a lot of line drives, that, that cue shot. He's been a busy man over at third base and nothing's come easy to him. Nothing's been easy for him. Here's the first pitch to Andy Gordon. He'll ground that one down the third baseline, and it'll roll foul. He gave it, ground the ball to the, down the third baseline and make it go fair. Third base is in the good spot for, for Andy here in the, the first game. He'll hit one down the, down the left field line. Here's the 0-1 pitch. Instead, he'll go right back up the middle line, shot to the center fielder. McCafferty is there, and there's two quickly down. Here in the bottom of the third inning, and that'll bring up Ben Dean. See if the A's can get something going here with two outs. A uh, couple, couple of balls, just unfortunately for the A's, hit right at, uh, right at the Smitties to open up this bottom of the third inning. Here's the first pitch to Ben and Dean, taken for strike one. Dean's one for one, two RBI single. He is left stranded at third base, which would have put Post eight ahead four to three in that bottom of the first, but yet they trail four to three here. In the bottom of the third, there's a ground ball. Jack Van Camp will make the play over at first base as a first base coach and is quickly 0-2. Showing a little bit more effort than what Coach Nas did over <laughs> at third base. Here's the 0-2 pitch. Dean with a ground ball the right side. It will be fielded off of a sliding attempt. Can't pick it up in time as the second baseman, Hoffman. Struggling to pick up the ball and Dean safe at first. And the inning will continue for McGuire Rasky now to come to the plate. It'll be ruled an error by the second baseman, Hoffman. And so now here's McGuire Rasky. Again, the 
the the Aberdeen outfielders given given up a lot of room in left center and and this is this is a prime opportunity for McGuire Rasky the way that he he uses that inside out swing he can he can really find some room in that left center field gap tonight. First pitch was taken for a strike and it's 0 one Rasky had an RBI ground out which tied the game. Gave them that three run first inning did post eight. Two down here in the bottom of the third. Bennett Dean is over at first. 0 one pitch. Rasky will go the other way down the left field line. That's going to drop in for a base hit. Dean will round second. He is on his way to third. Rasky will take off for second. He will get to second base, and it's going to be second and third here with two away. And a base hit could give Post State now their first lead. And Aberdeen outfield pulled around on the left-hander to shade him towards right field and just just a ball that floated floated the other way into left field just kind of kind of right down the left field line and and heads up base running by by both Dean and Rasky and they both get into scoring position here with with two outs and we'll see if they can generate a little offense here with on this two out rally. Matt Hansen will take strike one at the knees. He popped out of the shortstop. Clemens in his first at bat. Here's the 0 one pitch. Here's a ground ball to the left side. It'll be fielded by Clemens. The throw to first is a low one and it is picked out by Fayok, who did the splits to make the play. The Aberdeen goalie will make that play and there's will retire the side. No run score, one hit, one air, and two men left on base. We head to the top of the fourth inning, a 4-3 lead for Aberdeen over Post State. You're listening to Post State Baseball on a KCCR Sports and on YouTube there you are listening to Post 8 on KCCR and on YouTube at KCCR Sports. Innovation. It's right here. Avera St. Mary's Hospital keeps care local for you and your family, offering comprehensive care that has earned four out of five stars by the Centers for Medicare and Medicaid Services in hospital performance and safety. Avera St. Mary's world-class care is further supported by advanced technology, two-way video e-consults, 3D mammography, and a state-of-the-art birthing center, so you and your family don't have to go anywhere else because innovation lives right here in Pier. Learn more at avera.org slash news. Your home and business are important to you, and you need quality furnace and air conditioning products and service. With a combined 50-plus years of experience, AirTech Heating and Cooling provides you with just that service. Call 945-0160 for sales, service, and installation of furnaces, air conditioning, and heat pumps. AirTech Heating and Cooling features the American Standard products. Sales, installation, and service. You want the best, and that's what you'll find at AirTech Heating and Cooling in Pier. It is the time of the fourth inning as we have a new man on the mound. It is going to be Jaden Weeby that will tow the rubber. Kate Kaiser will go into his spots at second base and will take Gary Nedved's spot in the DH position. So he will be the leadoff man in the bottom of the fourth inning will be Kate Kaiser. But here's Jaden Weeby with a chance to keep this a 4-3 deficit and potentially even pick up a win if Post State can, can come back from it. This is the third appearance for Jaden Weeby. They're on six innings so far, 10 hits, six runs, five of those earned. Four walks, three strikeouts, a 5.83 ERA and a 2.33 whip for the uh, sophomore, soon to be junior for Post State as he will deal with two, three, and four. Not an, not an easy uh, task, against one against his lineup, but not an easy task to go two, three, and four here uh, for Hoffman, McCafferty, and Clements. And for for Elliott Life, will will give you his numbers on the day as, as he goes final. There's a ground ball to the left side. The first pitch from Hanson will field it short. And there's one pitch and one out. Open up the top of the fourth. Elliott Life goes three innings in his, in his start today. Six hits allowed, four runs. All of them earned three walks, four strikeouts, 83 pitches on the day. 48 for strikes to the 19 batters that he faced. And so since he's gone over that 80 pitch mark, uh, he will need four days of rest. He will he will not be available until Sunday uh, for the eights uh, as they go down to the Dakota Classic. First pitch is upstairs for ball one to Aiden McCafferty, who is one for two, a single and a uh, ground ball to the third baseman, Gordon. The 1-0 pitch is over for strike one. It's now one and one. Post State will play one game Friday, two games on Saturday, and then the first game on Sunday. 1-1 one, one pitch is over and is now 1-2. If they win the pool, they'll come back and play Sunday night in Harrisburg, but they have to win the pool. They can't even get second place to still advance to Sunday night. Here's a 1-2 pitch. Here's a ground ball over the third baseman, Gordon. He'll slide down to make the play that gets up, throw the first, is in time. And there's now two down 
And a good play from Andy Gordon over at third base. Gordon continues to work hard over there. Uh, not an easy play as he, uh, as the ball kind of squirted out of his glove, but he recovered nicely. Nice strong throw across the diamond to re to retire McCaffrey. And anytime you can you can retire Aiden McCaffrey, that's that's a big deal. 5.53 on base percentage for the number three hitter in the Aberdeen lineup. That one's popped up by Clemens. Rasky will go to his left. He'll make the catch. It's a one-two-three inning for Jaden Weeby. A quick inning for Weeby to open up his pitching performance. We head to the bottom of the fourth, Aberdeen and Pier. It's a 4-3 lead for the Smitties. You're listening to Post State Baseball on KCCR and on KCCR Sports. Most of us already know that Gale's Gas of Pier is the place to call for propane. They offer an automatic fill plan so you never have to worry about running out of propane. They accept debit and credit payments or a budget payment plan to spread out the cost throughout the year so you never have surprises when you get your bill. For delivery, convenience, and great customer service, call Gales Gas at 224-5518. That's Gales Gas at 224-5518. No one likes to have electrical problems, but when they happen, call Todd's Electric at 223-2518. With over 28 years of experience, Todd's Electric can handle any type of electrical problem, whether it's residential, commercial, or agricultural. Their knowledgeable staff knows and understands the importance of your home, business, or ag facility and are prepared to help. Call Todd's Electric at 223-2518. That's 223-2518. Todd's Electric, serving the Pier and Fort Pier areas. The line to power. As we welcome you back here in the bottom of the fourth inning, a 4-3 lead of four. The uh, Aberdeen Smitties, John Wickler alongside Greg Dean. As we head to the bottom of the fourth, it will be 7-8-9. Kate Kaiser will get his first at bat with the Senior Legion team, Jack Merquan, and then Brecken Kruger be back to the top of the order for Kate Hinkle. As Kate Kaiser, the right-handed hitting uh, second baseman here, will get his first official at bat, or I guess... Technically, it doesn't have to be his first official at bat. First official plate appearance here for the senior legion. He'll swing and miss at the first pitch by Wegman. And he's down 0-1. Kaiser, the rising rising sophomore and somebody that that uh, I think Pure fans will get to know a lot of over the next couple of years. 0-1 pitch. Kaiser will ground to the third base side. Be fielded by Holmstrom all the way behind the bag. The throw to first is picked out by Fayak at first. Good play from Holmstrom behind the third base bag, and the leadoff man retired. And that's, we were talking off air, uh, Fayok, the, the goalie for the Aberdeen Cougar hockey team, and and you can see the value of, of having a hockey hockey goalie over at first base. As here is now Jack Merquan, first pitch to him, is taken for a strike. He, he may, yeah, he, he made that a little bit more unconventional by putting... He's a right-handed thrower, so he put the, the left foot on the bag instead of the right foot on the bag to stretch out with the left hand as it's now 0-2 here to Murquan. But he still made the play. He, he made it work. And he he won a first baseman. First baseman and hockey goal is probably going to be close together. 0-1 pitch, they swing and a miss, and it's now two down here for Brecken Kruger. Strikeout victim, the second strikeout victim for Wagman here in the ball game. As Kruger will come up with nobody on and two down here in the bottom of the fourth. He struck out swinging his first stab at first pitch is over for ball one up high to Kruger. Here's the 1-0 pitch outside and it's now 2-0. Again, we'll see if the eights can, can generate some offense with two outs. They were able to do it last inning, just weren't able to get Get, get the runner across home plate. Let's see if they can do it this time. Kruger will line the 2-0 pitch down the third base line, but it will be foul. And it's now 2-1. That ball, ball rolls slightly into fair territory. But nobody else knows that's in fair territory. Here's a 2-1 pitch, and now Kruger will go the other way with it. Down the right field line, slicing into foul territory. It'll land foul. And the count's now two and two. Would have been interesting. To <laughs> and obviously, I think the umpires would have been able to see it. But if that ball starts to, if, if Kruger hits that 2-1 pitch down the third base line and goes all the way in the corner, and the left fielder goes and picks up the ball that's just sitting there because he doesn't have to go run for the other one and throws it in, and what the umpires would do, 
Because obviously it's the wrong ball, but it wasn't fair territory. Here's a foul ball that will land in the seats. And the count's now two and two. Right on a line towards your window. Yeah. Didn't have enough, didn't have enough uh, to get back here, though. Here's the 2-2 two -two pitch. Swing and a miss as Krieger will go down on strikes. He's tagged out as the ball was dropped, and that will be a 1-2-3 inning for Wagman. We head to the top of the fifth inning. A 4-3 lead for Aberdeen over Pier. You're listening to Post 8 Baseball on KCCR and on YouTube at KCCR Sports. When something just isn't right, it's natural to talk about it. If you had a toothache, you'd tell someone. If you found out you had diabetes, you'd learn to take care of it. But when you're feeling stressed, sad, or worried, you're less likely to tell someone. Why do we treat physical and mental health so differently? There is no difference. We all need someone to talk to, and there's nothing shameful about wanting to be healthy for you. When you just need someone to talk to, contact Rising Hope Counseling at 494-1500 or risinghope605.com. Rising Hope Counseling, offering hope, healing, and change. Rising Hope Counseling. Because if you have hope, you, you have, have everything. Hey, it's Julia from Milwaukee Federal Credit Union, letting you know that our recreational special is back again. With terms up to 10 years, no payments for 90 days, and rates as low as 2.4% APR. Apply online or stop in at 221 East Pleasant Drive in Pier and let Jameson or I get you started. People helping people, Hawaii, Hawaii. The, it is the top of the fifth inning, and it is a 4-3 lead for Aberdeen over Post State. Jane Weeby had a five-pitch fourth inning, his first of the uh, first inning that he's come in to pitch, and it'll be now five, six, and seven. Steinwand, Fayok, and Holmstrom be the first three hitters. As Post State trailing by one here as we open up the top of the fifth. Jane Weeby, this is third appearance on the year for post eight uh, six innings of, of work so far uh, no wins no losses no saves on the year has allowed 10 hits in those six innings uh, six runs five of them earned four walks three strikeouts 5.83 ERA on the year first pitch is fouled just onto the third base dugout so the count is 0-1-1 here is the 0-1 pitch from Weeby. that one misses a little outside, maybe a little high, and it's now one and one to Steinwand, who is one for two. Struck out swinging, and also got a base hit. One one pitch. Swing and a miss. Steinwand chased it upstairs. And it's now one and two here to the uh, DH in this ball game. Aberdeen and Sturgis will play after this one. Somewhere around 4.45, 5 o'clock. 1-2 pitch, a curveball, swing and a miss. And a good job there by Jaden Weeby to get the first strikeout. And there's one down here in the top of the fifth inning. Got some action down in the post-state bullpen. I think that's Brady Getz getting warm. Uh, we'll see how how the eights want to use him, either in either in relief action or whether he's getting ready for, for the start here in, in the second game today against Sturgis. The first pitch is... Taken for strike one to Fayok. And two RBI single in his first at bat. Here's a ground ball left side. That's through the left side for a base hit. And Fayok is now one for two. As it'll bring up Brian Holmstrom. Looking for his first base hit. That is now the seventh hit so far for Aberdeen. Three hits in the first inning, three in the second inning. There's going to be three in the third inning, I should say. And their first one against Jane Weeby. First pitch is miss low for ball one to Holmstrom. Holmstrom just his second game on the year so far for for the Smitties. He's just one for four on on the year. 250 batting average. 1-0 pitch is outside and it's now 2-0. Dirk Campbell gave me a quick text. He said that he's uh, turned into a big Cardinals fan. 2-0 pitch is outside is uh, on the outside edge. It's now two and one. Did he hit his head or something? No, he. That, <laughs> I will say that that is a big lie. He he did text and say, "How about those Cubs?" Two one pitch. There's a swing and a foul off of Finkel. Is now two and two. I don't know it, that I I would have. I think I would have bet the farm that I would never have heard Dirk Campbell text say anything even about think even think 
that he was a big Cubs fan. <laughs> Here's the 2-2 pitch. Swing and a miss. Uh, second strikeout here in the inning and of the ball game for Jane Weeby. And there's now two down. And then we got Brock Martin, who is one for one on an RBI single that give, gave Aberdeen the 4-3 lead in that uh, top of the uh, third inning. Yeah, he's feeling pretty good right now. I bet you, though, if the, the weekend didn't go the, the way that it did, he wouldn't have said anything about the Cubs. <laughs> he's only rubbing salt in the wound right now after the Cubs swept the Cardinals over the weekend. Here's the 0-1 pitch, and that's high and outside, and I bet you he's fist bumping right now that I even said that over the air that that, that happened. Counts 1-1 one one here to Brock Martin, 1-1 pitch. Here's a line shot on a one hopper and a good play by Cade Kaiser. The throw to first pulls Dean off the bag. He did not get the tag applied. So it's first and second here with two away. And the inning will continue. The air will be charged to Kaiser. Yeah, great play by Kaiser to glove the ball, but then then the, the hard hit ground ball off of Martin's bat uh, actually pulled him far to his left, and so he actually spun spun around, and, and when he did, just just did not make a good throw over to first base. And, and Dean tried to, tried to glove the ball and sweep tag Martin as he was going by, but just wasn't able to get the, get the tag on the speedy Brock Martin. So it's now an 0-1 count here to Candace as he popped the first pitch up and hit the, barely got a piece of the, the fencing behind home plate. So it's an 0-1 count. Candace is 0 for 2. Flew out to the right fielder, Kruger, and also struck out looking. 0-1 pitch, there's a big swing and a miss. It's now 0-2. Trying to get out of this inning. Jane Weeby struck out two so far. Looking for that third strikeout. Here's the 2 Swinging a foul tip, just got a piece of it to Canis. He stays alive with an 0-2 count. First and second here with two away in the top of the fifth inning. Here's the 2 Just a bit outside, and it's now one and two. Dirk, uh, he did say that he was fist pumping the air whenever, <laughs> as I was saying it. So, here's a one-two pitch. Upstairs, and it's now a two and two. Yeah, it gives him a chance to relive that weekend glory. Deuces are wild here. Two on, two out, the two-two pitch. Swing and a miss by Weeby, and he gets the third strikeout of the inning. No runs, one hit, one air. And a two men left on base. We head to the bottom of the fifth. It is a 4-3 lead for Aberdeen over Pierre. You're listening to Post 8 Baseball on a KCCR and on YouTube at KCCR Sports. Pier Sports Center is your local Ranger Boat and Mercury outboard dealer. They're a must-see for your Ranger Boat needs. See their selection of Mercury outboard motors for more power. Pier Sports Center can help you with financing and other boating needs. Need service for your boat or trailer to keep you going? Pier Sports Center is your one-stop shop. Pier Sports Center, Ranger Boats, and Mercury Outboard, a combination that can't be beat. Pier Sports Center, 1440 North Garfield Avenue in Pier, or give them a call, 224-5546. When you want the best prices and best selection, go to Wagner Auto in Pier. The certified sales staff at Wagner Auto will provide you service after the sale and how to get easy financing. Check out their website, wagnerauto.com, or stop in. They have the best prices and won't be undersold. Wagner Auto has the region's largest selection with over 280 new and quality pre-owned vehicles. GM certified pre-owned vehicles give you peace of mind with their 12-month or 12,000-mile bumper-to-bumper warranty and 5-year or 100,000-mile powertrain warranty. Log on to wagnerauto.com or stop by Wagner Auto in Pier, South Dakota's oldest auto dealer since 1906. As we welcome you back here to Heights Stadium, as we head to the bottom of the fifth inning, it is going to be the top of the order for Post State. Kate Henkel, Jaden Weeby, and Andy Gordon still a 4 3 lead as the Eights are looking to win their sixth straight. But Wegman, who's on the mound, has been good so far, allowed three runs in that first inning, but since then has got nothing but zeros across the board. In the last three innings, Kate Hinkle will look to try and change that. He went off the bottom of the first, reached on air, and came around to score. Part of the two RBI single for Bennett Dean. First pitch from Wegman to Hinkle to lead off the bottom of the fifth. The ground ball to the left side, fielded by Holmstrom. The throw to first is a high one. 
But uh, Fiak was able to stay on the bag. And it's the first down here in the bottom of the fifth inning. And where, where Wagaman has been successful, just 50 pitches so far through through four and a third innings uh, today against the eights. Uh, but coming into this game, he averaged uh, over a walk an inning. And so far through four and a third, he's only walked one. First pitch to Jaden Weeby is taken for a strike. He was hit by a pitch and also grounded to the third baseman in his two trips to the plate. Here's the 0-1. Weeby will ground it to the third baseman again. It will be right over the top of the bag. From behind the bag, a throw is not in time, and Weeby will beat it out for an infield single. Good hustle there from Weeby. And that will be the fourth hit, excuse me, the, yeah, the fourth hit of the ball game for Post State. And it'll bring up Andy Gordon with a runner on first and one down. Yeah, and just kind of a, not really a slowly hit ground ball, but a, a, a ground ball that wasn't hit real hard, but right over the top of the third base bag. And Holmstrom had to go to his right and then make a really long throw. There's a ground ball to the shortstop, Clemens. He'll flip to second for one, back to first, a 6-4-3 double play. And just like that, the bottom of the fifth will come to an end. No runs, one hits, no errors, and no one left on base. We head to the top of the six. Aberdeen still leads Pier 4-3. You're listening to Post 8 Baseball today's KCCR and on YouTube at KCCR Sports. Evermore Boutique, where fashion doesn't have to break the bank. See them for men's, women's, and children's clothing, shoes, accessories, and so much more. Open seven days a week, Monday through Friday from noon to 7, Saturdays from 11 to 6, and Sundays from noon to 5. Visit Evermore Boutique, located at 104 South Pier Street in Pier, or give them a call today, 605-494-0194. That's Evermore Boutique in Pier. Insurance. We all need it to protect our homes, health, businesses, and belongings. But having adequate coverage is just the beginning. You also need the support of professionals who stand by your side to protect what's important to you. Fisher Rounds & Associates combines the coverage you want with the commitment you need. Fisher Rounds & Associates. At your service, at your side. With offices in Pier, Mitchell, Watertown, Sioux Falls, and Rapid City. As we welcome you back here at the top of the sixth inning at Hyatt Stadium, a 4-3 lead for Aberdeen over Post State. Brady Getz is now on the mound for the eights as he will take over for Jane Weeby, who threw those two innings. Didn't allow a run, only one hit. Uh, only that base runner along with an air. The only two base runners that reached against Jane Weeby. Getz will try and do the same here against the Smitties. But this is a, uh, I think, two Something that we, we, we see with Jane Weeby coming out of the game after throwing some two pretty good innings is there, there's a long weekend coming up with a lot of games to be played, even two tomorrow, and then you get four at least four games over the weekend. But you got to try and conserve your pitchers and get a lot out of them, uh, so you want to kind of keep those pitch counts low. Yeah, Weeby just 26 pitches uh, through those two innings, so he's he's would be available, and then uh, at any point uh, during the weekend, at least right now depending upon if he would get used tomorrow. First pitch is Miss Lowe for ball one. To the top of the order, Max Prent, Tyler Hoffman, and Aiden McCafferty. The first three hitters for Aberdeen in the top of the sixth inning. There's a swing and a miss, and it's now one and one. For Brady Getz, this is his third appearance on the year. Uh, both of the previous appearances came in a starting role. Six innings pitched, 16.33 uh, ERA, and a 3.33 whip so far for the rising senior. 1-1 one, one pitches upstairs and is now 2-1. And, one. and what, what's gotten Brady in trouble so far, because uh, he was a second-team All-Stater through the high school season and, and uncharacteristically just had trouble finding the strike zone in those first two appearances and, and uh, gave up 10 walks in six innings. And those walks really came back to, to hurt him in those first two outings. Leadoff man is on base with a single for Max Pratt, and that'll bring up Tyler Hoffman, the second baseman, who is 0 for 3. And you're right that walks will get any pitcher in trouble no matter how good you are. And that's why you see a lot of these pitchers that are really good uh, in, in the major leagues don't walk very many guys. You know, Jacob deGrom does not walk. Uh, he, it's a rarity if he, if he walks anybody. 
Well, and then and then you, you come back and he's also given up ten hits in addition to those ten walks. And so sometimes when you're when you're struggling to find the strike zone, then you just you just try to you know be a little bit too little bit too fine and and you tend to leave stuff up over the over the middle of the plate. And and you know the hitters that he's faced have been have been against a couple of pretty good teams and they were able to to turn the ball around on him. Count is 0-2 here to Tyler Hoffman. Here's the 0-2 pitch. Swing and a miss. There's a big strikeout for Getz. His first of the afternoon. And there's one down to bring up Eden McCafferty, who is one for three. He singled in his first at bat, and then he grounded to the third baseman, Gordon, in back-to-back -back trips. One down here in the top of the sixth inning. 4-3 lead for Aberdeen. Here's the first pitch to McCafferty. The curveball that finds the zone. And it's 0 1. So far through these first three batters, gets gets his look much sharper than he than he has in his in his previous two outings. We'll see if he can continue continue uh, that appearance today. Oh, one pitch. That one is taken for a strike. Trying to check his swing. Did McCafferty did not. And the count is 0 2. Here to the center fielder. So now gets has got. Uh, a pitch to play with here and go anywhere in the zone or even out of the zone. Here's the 0-2 pitch. Curveball, swing and a miss by McCafferty. Gets him to chase, and there's now two down. Curveball in the dirt. And because the runner's occupying first base, no need to tag McCafferty out. And there's now two down to bring up Nick Clements. Yeah, and so far um, the eights have done a nice job with, with the middle of this, uh, with the top third of, of the Aberdeen order, holding them down to just two hits in – and now 11 at bats, uh, and so so for a, a good hitting team like this Aberdeen team is, uh, doing a good job. Just gotta just gotta find a way to generate just a little more offense right now. Nick Clemens is two for three, an RBI single in his first stat bat that gave Aberdeen the lead. There's a line drive to right field coming in as Kruger dives and he makes the catch to end the top of the sixth inning. Fantastic play from Brecken Kruger out in right field. As we head to the bottom of the six, no runs, one hit, no errors, one man left on base. Let's see if that can get the eights across the board. They're down four to three to Aberdeen. You're listening to Post 8 Baseball on KCCR and on YouTube at KCCR Sports. BankWest Insurance has the expertise and resources to deliver personalized service and customized solutions. As an independent agency, we shop dozens of companies to get you the best coverage at the best price. As your trusted choice for insurance coverage, we promise to go the extra mile so you can rest assured your loved ones and your assets are protected. Contact your local agent with BankWest Insurance to work for you. Not a deposit, not FDIC insured, not insured by any federal agency, not guaranteed by any bank, may go down in value, equal opportunity provider. Home Care Services is a private agency committed to providing expert advice and specialized care to those who want to remain living independently at home. Home Care Service has a team of nurses, caregivers, and administrative staff that offers a full range of in-home support services to our area. For more information about Home Care Services, call 224-2273. Expert advice, professional care. Home Care Services, 224-2273. It is the bottom of the sixth inning. It is going to be four, five, and six for the eights who trail Aberdeen four to three. John Winkler alongside Greg Dean, Bennett Dean, McGuire Rasky, and Matthew Hansen be the first three hitters. Matthew Wegman was able to get through that bottom of the fifth inning with a double play ball to end the inning. He gave up a hit, but boy, he looked really good and has looked really good. Uh, he's faced. The last seven batters that's come to the plate, even if they've got a base hit, they've been retired on a double play, so he's faced that minimum in the last seven batters, uh, dating back to the third inning. He's He's been sharp, uh, and a guy that needed it with that ERA, where it was that, and he's, that ERA's uh, dropping down quite a bit here with the, with the appearance that he's had in this ball game. But it's not over with yet, and Post State can still keep that ERA up there uh, with, a, with a big inning here in the bottom of the sixth, starting with Bennett Dean. Here's the first pitch to him. That one will miss low for ball one. Yeah, and what what Wagaman has done is is he's just he's just thrown strikes today. Uh, Fifty four pitches now, thirty nine for strikes. One zero pitch. That one will catch the zone at the knees, and it's now one and one. To the first baseman, Dean. Here's the one one pitch. That one's fouled. 
And it's now one and two. Dean threw on Saturday, so he's available to throw again uh, over the Dakota Classic. His last day of mandatory rest is outside. It's now two and two is tomorrow, so he's unavailable to throw against post 22, but can return either Friday, Saturday, or Sunday, depending on what Coach White wants to do. 2-2 two -two pitch is inside, and it's now three and two. And of course, that weekend is solely based around at least those four games. And of course, if you advance to the tournament, then you might face another South Dakota team. But that tournament is solely based around Sioux Falls West as there's a 3-2 pitch, a ground ball to the second baseman. And Hoffman will retire Dean out at first. Leadoff man retired here in the bottom of the sixth inning to bring up McGuire Askey. But you you're, are setting up your matchup. Your pitchers are going to be based around the Sioux Falls West matchup, which is the third game of the, of the weekend, because the other three... It doesn't matter if you win or lose it, but you have to win against Sioux Falls West for power points for uh, for South Dakota Class A Legion baseball. Yeah, and that's and that's the priority game. I mean, that's the that's the game that you're really pointing at at trying to win. Not that not that you're not trying to win the other games, but but that's the one that you're like you said, John. You're really hoping to hoping to to set yourself up for and and really really prioritize of, of that pool play. That's the one you're aiming at. Here's the 0-1 pitch, and it'll be fouled back, and it's now 0-2. You know, you're know you playing those four games over the weekend, and whether you go 1-3, 3-1, whatever it is, as long as that Sioux Falls West team is in the win column for you, that's, it, it qualifies it would qualify as a successful weekend as the 0-2 is outside, and it's now 1-2. Obviously, a huge successful weekend is going 7-0 and and winning the whole Dakota Classic. But uh, that, that one game against Sioux Falls West, that's, again, the, the priority over the full weekend. 1-2 pitch is grounded up the middle. Fielded by the shortstop, Clemens. The throw to first is in time. And there's two ground ball outs to open up the bottom of the sixth inning. And it'll bring up Matt Hansen with Brady Getz on deck as he's in where uh, Gary Nedved began. Cade Kaiser had his at bat, and Getz now will be in that number seven spot to come to plate and could bat in the bottom of the sixth inning if Hansen's able to reach base. Here's the first pitch to Hansen. He'll foul it back, and it's 0 and 1. Yeah, and, and what Wagaman has been able to do so far, like I said, is not only has he has he thrown strikes, but he's also, when he's gotten gotten post eight to to induce some ground balls they've hit him right at right at the infield and just like this one just right at the outfield a line shot that's caught by the center fielder McCaffrey they retire the side here in the bottom of the sixth inning another one two three inning for Wagman and we head to the top of the seventh and Aberdeen leads Pier four to three you're listening to post eight baseball on a KCCR and on YouTube at KCCR sports at Black Hills Federal Credit Union our top priority is providing value to our members. Since 1941, we have helped our neighbors buy homes and vehicles, finance their farms and ranches, insure their assets, and retire comfortably. From Custer to Sioux Falls, we live and work in our communities, and we treat our members like family. Visit bhfcu.com to learn more about how you can join. BHFCU is member-owned, not-for-profit, and federally insured by NCUA. Building a home. It's the biggest investment most of us make in a lifetime. Not to mention it's a decision that, well, you pretty much live with day and night. The quality of the workmanship stares back at you like a reflection. It also affects the value of your investment. Choosing the right contractor is critical. Kruger Contracting is that contractor. Call 222-2523. Quality workmanship and materials completed on time. Kruger Contracting. In a word, quality. Call 222-2523. Time of the seventh inning. It is a 4-3 lead for Aberdeen. John Winkler alongside Greg Dean. As it'll be Josh Steinwant, Matt Fayok, and Brian Holmstrom to lead things off here in the top of the seventh against Brady Getz, who had a leadoff single against him in the top of the sixth and then struck out the next two in a row before a... Diving catch by Brecken Kruger out in right field to end the top of the sixth inning. So we'll look for another quick inning, and we'll, most, we'll have to get a zero here. Post eight down by one right now. The first pitch to Steinwatt misses for ball one. He is one for three with two strikeouts. 
here in this opening game of a triangular between Pierre Aberdeen and Sturgis. 1-0 pitch is over and is now 1-1. One one. Have not seen if Sturgis has arrived yet. That's okay. They they have hopefully they would have arrived by now, but they but they are here. One one pitch is at the letters and it's now one and two. Steinwatt does not agree with that call. And he will back far away from the left handed hitter batter's box. So Getz now will deliver the one two pitch. The DH Steinwatt. He'll chop at it. As a pitch in the dirt, Dean will field. He'll underhand flip to Getz to come cover the bag at first. And a 3-1 put out on the ground ball to open up the top of the seventh. Yeah, just a, a high chopper on, on one bounce over to Dean at first. Carries him a little bit to his to his right. And, and PFP during the spring and, and here in this early season in the summer, uh, paid off pitcher's fielding practice, gets over to cover first base, and, and the eights get the, get the leadoff batter. First pitch is over for strike one to Matt Fiak, who is two for three, two singles, and a two RBI single in the top of the first inning. The 0 1 pitch, that one's popped up to the second baseman, Jane Weeby. He'll make the catch, and there's now two down. And that'll bring up Brian Holmstrom. Boy, that bird was flying. To me, I'm sure he probably was nowhere close to, to where the, the pitching mound or home plate was. That bird was kind of flying up. I had a momentary thought of a Randy Johnson incident. <laughs> and thankfully the bird, though, was, was flying high enough that he wasn't in any kind of danger. First pitch is over for strike one to Brian Holmstrom. Well, you imagine if we had a delay for, for something like that <laughs> at, at a high school baseball game. Here's the 0-1 pitch. It's upstairs. I guess you would almost think that it would be more likely to happen in a high school baseball game because there's so much more open space than there is in a major league ballpark. But somehow that bird and that poor bird ran in front of Randy Jackson fastball. 1-1 one, one pitch. The one will miss and it's now 2-1. And one. and if if you've ever seen that that video clip, uh, you – you know that, that that bird did not survive running into a Randy Johnson fastball. <laughs> Here's the 2-1 pitch to Holmstrom. Comes inside and is now 3-1. Yeah, I mean, it's almost, it's almost as if the bird exploded because uh, he, he just, uh, it was nothing but feathers. 3-1 pitch on the outside corner but taken for a strike and the count is now full of 3-2. With Brock Martin on bit on deck, yeah, that, the the amount of feathers that came off that bird was was ridiculous. Here's a three-two pitch, swing and a miss, and guess we'll get a one-two-three inning, and that will send us to the bottom of the seventh. Post eight, they need at least one run, one to tie, two to win it. Down four to three to Aberdeen. Back in a minute, you're listening to Post Eight Baseball on a KCCR and on YouTube at KCCR Sports. Sioux Nation of Fort Pierre knows what that sound is. It's baseball season. They also know that means it's grilling season. Sioux Nation has the Green Mountain Grill choices that you need for those hot dogs and burgers for tailgating. And let's be honest, you know there will be a steak in there too. Visit Sioux Nation of Fort Pierre and see their selection of grills. While you're there, also pick up some seasonings for your grilling needs. Visit Sioux Nation at 504 Deadwood Street, Fort Pierre. Looking for your next new or used car, truck, or SUV? Then go no further than the comfort of your own home. Shop online at LambMotor.com. On LambMotor.com, you'll find the vehicles Lambs has in stock. You can schedule a test drive or your vehicle's next tune-up all online. New or used, shop for it all online anywhere you are. Lamb Motor has the right vehicle for you. Lamb Motor in Oneida and online, LambMotor.com. Couple of pinch hitters to open up the bottom of the seventh inning. First, it'll be Jack Van Camp to hit for Brady Getz. The second batter of the inning will be Aaron Booth that will hit for Jack Merquan. Booth was released to resume a baseball activity, so he's got a chance to uh, will hit in the bottom of the seventh and hopefully with a runner on base, which would be the tying run in, in the form of Jack Van Camp. Here's the first pitch to Van Camp. That one will bounce in for ball one. He is one for two, is uh, Van Camp. Hit a triple in his lone hit. Actually, he's two for four with a single and a triple. 
So a 500 batting average so far. Here's a 1-0 pitch. That one's upstairs. It's now 2-0. Doesn't have to get a base hit here. Just find a way to get on base somehow. Yep, that's what I was just going to say. Just need to get the leadoff guy on, put a little pressure on the on the Aberdeen Smitty defense. Here's a 2-0 pitch. That one will bounce in. It is now 3-0 to Van Camp. Aaron Booth is on deck. It will be interesting to see what happens, you know, because you need at least that one run. But if you can get first and second with nobody out, Brecken Kruger, who is probably the best bunter on the team to come up as the leadoff man is walked on four pitches. And that'll bring up Aaron Booth. But if you, if you can get those two guys on base and have Brecken Kruger come to plate, well, you're sitting pretty good to try and move them over into both in the scoring position here with in the uh, bottom of the seventh inning. So now here's Aaron Booth, first pitch to him. He'll swing and ground that one the left side through for a base hit. And Aaron Booth's first, uh, he's not waiting to take any pitch to open up this <laughs> season for him. He's going to swing the first one. Even if the guy had four pitches, had a walk to open up the bottom of the seventh, he's going to swing the first pitch. He gets a base hit. <laughs> There's first and second here with nobody out. And it all worked. <laughs> it all worked. Uh, only only Aaron Booth that would make that one work. That's that's a. I was wondering if Booth was going to take a pitch or not. One because he has not seen a pitch in quite a while, being able to hit, and then and after a four pitch walk, you think, well, that's the perfect time to take a pitch and see it. He says, no, I'm not going to do that. I'm going to get a base hit to the left side. But you know that you know actually that may not be bad strategy. I mean, you don't overthink something. You just go up, let your muscle memory work, and and that's exactly what Aaron Booth did. And and so the eight's got something going here in the bottom of the seventh. Um, Five hits on the board now for the eights. Uh, five hitter, five hitter, five hitter, five hitter. So <laughs> we'll, we'll see if we can can keep the momentum going. Yeah, and, and Breck and Kruger is coming to the plate now. Again, we'll, we'll see if Kruger wants to bunt the ball, as or if, I guess Coach White wants him to bunt the ball. One of the best bunters on the team. Yeah, and, and, he, and he got the top of the order up after that, If even if the sacrifice is good, second and third with one down. So here's the first pitch. Kruger shows a bunt. He'll bunt it to the third base line. That's a perfect bunt from Kruger. No play, the throw, and Kruger is safe at first. And the bases are now loaded with nobody out. The infield single for Kruger. Tying runs in at third base, winning run in scoring position. And it's the top of the order with nobody out here at the bottom of the seventh. Yeah, Holmstrom, the, the Aberdeen third baseman, playing back. Actually, he was behind the third base bag, and a nice, nice choice by by Kruger to to bunt the ball to the third base side. And the bases are now loaded for the eights. Cade Hinkle rips that one down the right field line. It'll be laying foul. That would have won the ball game for the eights, but it's an 0-1 count. Hinkle is 0 for 3 so far. Reach on an error to open up the bottom of the first, and he ground out to the second baseman, also ground out to the third baseman. Infield is drawn in all the way around, trying to keep that run. Out of the plate, keep them having the lead. 0-1 pitch is outside, and it's now 1-1. One and one. and a, you know, a good spot for Cade Hinkle, somebody who grinds at bats, uh, able to work count, uh, leads the team in walks. He'll, he's going to do everything he can to find a way on. Here's a 1-1 pitch upstairs, and it's now 2-1 and one here to Hinkle. On deck is Jaden Weeby. We fall by Andy Gordon. And the Everdeen infield is not only in on the grass, they're about two steps in on the grass. Uh, so it just needs something hard through a hole. 2-1 pitch. Hankel will float this one. It'll be caught by the second basin. As there's now one down, Hoffman made the catch. And it'll bring up Jaden Weeby. Now we'll see what the middle wants to do because they could turn a game-ending double play, but if they don't get the double play, it'll be a tie ball game, and it looks like they're going to stay all the way in. All right, now the, now the middle will go back as Jaden Weeby is one for two so far. First pitch to him is upstairs for ball one. A couple of big at-bats coming right here for the eights. Uh, again, just need something, something to the outfield. Here's a 1-0 pitch to Weeby. Weeby line shot, beats it. That game is tied. Rounding third and trying to score his booth. The throw coming to the plate. It's going to land in front, not in time. And Jaden Weeby walks it off with a two RBI single in the bottom of the seventh. And Post State wins it five to four and keeps the win streak going. It's now six in a row for the eights. Yeah, and, and Aaron Booth motoring all the way on contact, just a, a, a ground ball to the left fielder, and, and that's exactly what we talked about. Just needs something to the outfield, and, and Nathan Nas, the coach in third base, 
did not even hesitate was 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 winding winding the arm and sending Aaron Booth without any hesitation and Booth just in ahead of the throw and the eight, eights get a couple in the bottom of the seventh and walk it off 5-4. A big win for the eights now six in a row as their record is up to eight and five. We step aside for two minutes wrap up game number one. You're listening to Post 8 Baseball here on a KCCR Peary Riverfront Broadcasting Station KCCR and on YouTube at KCCR Sports. This is the life, sitting here, sipping lemonade, basking in the warm sun, and admiring the beauty and the solitude of my very own landscape backyard. You know, I wasn't sure, but I was so glad when I made the call to Andy at Dakota Sprinkler and Landscaping to finally have the work done. Calling Dakota Sprinkler and Landscaping was probably one of the best and the easiest decisions I've ever made. Dakota Sprinkler and Landscaping, 280-4440. That's 280-4440. Nystrom Electrical Contracting in Pierre has been providing professional sales, service, and installation since 1977. Whether you're starting from scratch, new construction, or you're upgrading your current system at your home, farm, or office, give the professionals at Nystrom Electrical Contracting a call. They've got a lot of bright ideas. Call Nystrom today to schedule a free computer-generated estimate. The number is 224-8750, or visit their website at nystromelectric.com. Spring is finally here, and it's time to be on the lookout for one of South Dakota's most serious noxious weeds. This invader of roadside trees, pastures, and range is leafy spurge. This noxious weed infests over 300,000 acres. It's a perennial with a distinctive yellow-green color and stems that contain a milky sap. Roots can reach over 20 feet deep. There are several control options that producers can look at, including herbicide and biological control. If you have questions about leafy spurge, contact your local county weed and pest supervisor or the South Dakota Department of Agriculture. As long as you have a local cooperative, you'll never farm alone. At CHS Midwest Cooperative, our team is your team, ready to help you make the decisions that are vital to your operation. From the seed, plant health, and marketing the grain, to fuel to keep you running, the feed to supplement your herds, and the financing programs to make it all possible. We're here for you. Give CHS Midwest Cooperative a call today and let us show you the value of the co-op. Local, loyal, and trusted for generations. As we welcome you back here at Hyatt Stadium, it is a game one win for Post State. They walk it off in the bottom of the seventh with a two RBI single from Jane Weeby as they up their win streak now to six, eight, and five on the season. And then Greg, uh, a big win for the eights. Maybe not where they would, were hoping to see against this Aberdeen team who played really well in this ball game and, and had themselves a spot to win it. Uh, but the eights were able to come through when it mattered the most at the bottom of the seventh. Yeah, and, and that's what good teams do. I mean, when you find yourself behind the eight ball and, and facing a little bit of adversity, you find a way to find a way anyway to win ball games and and uh, and, and really tip your cap to 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 a couple of guys coming out of the bullpen. I mean, Jaden Weeby comes on and, and throws two innings of scoreless relief, and then Brady Getz came on and threw threw two innings of scoreless relief. And so so the bullpen stepped up, did its job, kept the Smitties off the board uh, after they put four runs on the board in the first three innings and like we talked about throughout this game that's a that's a good offensive ball club that Aberdeen is able to roll out on the field and and so after after uh, a three inning start from from Elliott Life uh, the bullpen came out and then and then again a, a big big tip of the hat to to Jack Van Camp to to lead off with that leadoff walk in in the seventh inning and just put some pressure on the defense Aaron Booth steps up with the Big single on the next pitch, and and then the eights uh, get a big walk off two run single from Jane Weeby, and and come out of here with a five four win. A big win at that as they uh, continue the win streak, eight and five on the season. A uh, win that for Aberdeen would have been a, would have been a big win for them uh, in the standings, but would have been one of those t tough losses for Post State if they would have uh, not got this win. And it took them to the seventh inning to get their first lead. But, hey, you know, we, we talked about early in the year uh, that it, for, for this pure governor and post state team, you get down, you, you know, you get up on them a couple runs, and uh, they, they kind of struggle to come back. Well, he got up on them three, did Aberdeen, came back and scored three in that, in that next inning, and then had to play from behind after the top of the third, and then scoring those last two runs and not giving up in that ball game. That's a big, you know, that's, it's not, you know, he, 
a big win against Aberdeen, but over in general, just a big win uh, for Post State. And again, the Post State continues to find ways to win ball games, and, and and if you continue throughout the season and you get late into tight ball games, and and you just know that you're never out of a ball game because you found ways to win games earlier in the season uh you just walk into those kinds of tight ball games uh with a little bit more confidence and so so uh games like this are 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 you know huge for post state uh, as they get down into the into the meat of this schedule post state will play sturgis here later on tonight it'll be around seven o'clock for that start as we'll get this game eh, get, get this game started around 4 30 so a uh, seven o'clock start for game number three of the entire day as pier will take on sturgis so we will send things back to regular programming until then until around 6 40 or 6 45 or so depending on how this sturgis and aberdeen game uh, will play uh, will play out but post state getting a win 5-4 over uh, Aberdeen in game one of the triangular here today. We will uh, be back around 640 uh, for that second game, that uh, second game starting, or for the second game for Pier, which is scheduled to start around 7 o'clock. Thanks to Ray Lewis back at the station. Greg Dean to my right. I'm John Winkler back on the air around 640 for that second game between Pier and Sturgis. Uh, you've been listening to Post State Baseball here on uh, KCCR and on YouTube at KCCR Sports. You've been listening to Post Aid Baseball on today's KCCR and today's KCCR.com. Post Aid Baseball is brought to you by Evermore Boutique, Wagner Auto, Owyhee Federal Credit Union, Service Master, Rising Hope Counseling, Todd's Electric, Pier Sports Center, AirTech, Gales Gas, Avera, Bank West. B&B Equipment, Overhead Door Company, Gateway Ford, Lincoln, and Toyota, Ferding Electric, Olson Plumbing, Agtegra, All Around Graphics, First Dakota National Bank, Comtech, Shane's Pharmacy, Black Hills Federal Credit Union, Midwest Cooperative, South Dakota Weed and Pest, Nystrom Electric, Dakota Sprinkler, Lamb Motor, Kathy Sunshine Properties, Sioux Nation, Kruger Contracting, Home Care Services, and Fisher Rounds. Join us all season long for Post 8 Baseball on today's KCCR and today's KCCR.com. This has been a special presentation of Riverfront Broadcasting Sports.